Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. As we worship our God and as we sing his praises and as we start off this week um, with the Lord and by worshiping our Lord, let us prepare our hearts. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead this worship service. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts as we sing his praises and as we once again listen to his words. So at this time, let's prepare our hearts. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to be in this place with us. all rise from our seats. Let's sing how great our God is. Let's hail him as our matchless King of Kings. Let's praise the Lord together in one voice. Sing all hail the power. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen, ye chosen. from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe. And crown him Lord of all. Sing the last verse, O oh, that with yonder. O oh, that. O oh, that with yonder sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song. And crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Let's sing all hail. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown.
washed away the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to let's sing one more time all who are thirsty all who are thirsty all who are weak come to the fountain heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out too deep we sing come Lord Jesus Lord Jesus, come. We sing, come, Lord Jesus, come. Let's sing, all who are thirsty, all who are thirsty, all who are weak, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life. Sorrow be washed away, be washed away. The waves of his mercy, as deep cries out, as deep cries out to we sing, Come, Lord, we sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come, we sing. to come into this place, come into our lives, to turn our hearts, to turn our hearts of stone into heart of flesh. Lord, we pray for you to open up our hearts and our ears as we listen to your word, as your word is spoken to us, Father. I pray that you would speak to us through your word and through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Please remain standing and let us now affirm our faith with a reading of the Apostles' Creed in unison begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. 
Thank you for opening up the heavens and opening up our souls with that song and with your beautiful voice. And with that heart, let us uh, take in the word of God for this morning. Our scripture for today comes to us from the New Testament, the book of John, chapter 8, verse 31 through 37. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 37, and I will read the word of God for you. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be freed indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me, because you have no room for my word. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Your Heavenly Father, let us have room for you and for your word in our lives. This generation is a wicked generation, Lord, and more and more it's pulling us down to the pit of spiritual laziness. 
Let us do away with sloth and put up a fight for your word so that it may dwell in us as the daily bread from heaven. Open up our hearts and eyes and ears as we pay attention to your word this morning once more. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This week I read an article titled, COVID Fatigue is Hitting Hard, Fighting It is Hard Too. Now in the article it said that both the intensity and the length of time of COVID-19 and its stress are taking a toll on everyone. People are tired of being cooped up, tired of being careful, tired of being scared, right? In the article, it said, this is a real challenge, said Kay Hermanson, UC Davis health psychologist in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. She continues, quote, there are no easy solutions. We know there are two kinds of stress that have long-term effects on our mental well-being and physical health, and they are intense stress and prolonged stress. We have both, unquote. And I believe she's right. And on top of that, the things we enjoy, things that give life meaning to us, have changed or been put off limits. So many of us who used to come to church regularly in order to worship the Lord and find comfort in the body of Christ, right, and, and participate in the community of God, the fellowship of God, the, the praying house of God, well, we've lost something precious for the time being. And this has given us both intense spiritual stress and prolonged spiritual stress. So in short, I want to say this, it's killing us. It's killing us. Now I know that we can't blame the government for all this, for doing their job and it's extending the social distancing period level four again and again and again and again. But we can't just sit there and do nothing. We, we got to do something about this intense stress that we have, this prolonged stress which is not just physical, but also spiritual. The article suggests that in, the, in the conclusion section that we should exercise, of course, right? Maintain positive thinking and be mindful and thankful all the time. But this, I read it, will this be enough for our current spiritual status? And my answer was no. If we're not sensitive about this intense, prolonged spiritual stress, then we'll fall into a pit that's so deep that it would be hard for us to get out of. And what I'm trying to say is that we might think that COVID-19 hasn't changed our lives that much. And we could think that when all this is over, we'll be back to normal again. Things would be, you know, what it used to be. But is that really true? Haven't we changed? Haven't our spiritual endeavor in Jesus died down, if not totally inactive these days? And I was looking for the right word for our spiritual conditions these days. And when I found this word, I thought, that's, it. that's the word I was looking for. It's something that's really getting into our lives these days. And the word was sloth. Sloth. I'm not talking about the mammal sloth. I'm talking about the condition sloth. Sloth refers to disinclination to action or labor. It also means spiritual apathy and inactivity. In Christianity, we call it the deadly sin of sloth. It's one of the seven deadly sins. Now, Dorothy Sayers, an author and an associate of C.S. Lewis, once wrote in her book that sloth is the sin that believes in nothing, that cares for nothing, that seeks to know nothing, 
that interferes with nothing, enjoys nothing, and remains alive because there is nothing for which it will die. I believe that's what COVID-19 is doing out there and in here as well. You know, you know how people say that, you know, these days it's dangerous outside, right? And I agree with it to some extent, but it's also dangerous in here if we continue down this road. At first, it was being unable to come to church. Then it was about worshiping wherever we can because it's a matter of our heart, right? The online presence of God. Then we began to skip Sundays have some, you know, family time, sort of relax since we used to spend so much time at church. Maybe God has given us this period of rest. Then it was more like, let's actually plan out the weekends without having church or worship in mind since we can't really be at church. It should be okay since God understands. Now, I don't know if this is you. I don't know. But I believe many Christians are actually taking this path and slowly moving away from living a life of worship. Their lifestyle is slowly getting into a habit of, it'll be okay, maybe next week. It's on YouTube anyway. I'll visit the Bible later, I'll pray later, I'll watch it later when I have time. Moving away. Indifference, sloth, spiritual depression. Dear brothers and sisters, if COVID-19 has brought something similar into your life, then we should be alert about our spiritual condition and the lifestyle that we're getting used to. And I'm not talking about coming back to church when the door is open. No, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about right now, your heart. What you are getting used to, that, that feeling during this period when, when old routines are coming loose and new routines are slowly settling in your life. Our passage begins with Jesus' words. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Well, are we holding on to his teachings these days? In another translation of the Bible, New Revised Standard Version, it says, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. Are you holding on to Jesus' teachings? Are you continuing in Jesus' words? Satan's work is always disconnecting us from the word so that we wander off from our faithfulness toward the word of God. Some routines of faith will nurture us and mature us so that we may bear the fruit of the spirit, right? Not all routines are bad for you. They keep you fit in many ways. We shouldn't be tied down by our routines. No, but we shouldn't throw away good ones just to say that we're free either. I have in mind praying at a certain time of the day. That's a good one, right? How about reading the Bible at a desired location and time? That's a routine that we shouldn't give up. How about keeping the Sabbath holy? That's something we can't give up as Christians. You know, Jesus is whispering to our ears this morning, or rather, he's shouting into our ears, if you could just hold to my teaching, if you could just continue my word. It's something for us to think about. Now, what happens when we close up our ears and we take the other path? Well, then your heart is empty. And you have no word in it because you're not continuing it. What happens? It becomes an empty space of darkness that grows mold of sin. 
Try to imagine mold growing in your heart. Dear brothers and sisters, your heart is a very sensitive thing. It reacts to what you receive right away. And when you begin to grow this mold of sin in it, what do you think would, would come out of that heart eventually? It will beget sinful conduct that go against the way of Jesus. It will bring down the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and tear down the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus says in verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. Such an important statement of Jesus here. Why? Because Jesus is telling us that your filial relationships, your descendancy, will not guarantee your faith and your faithful deeds. The Jews in this passage were indeed descendants of Abraham. They had the right to claim their status as Abraham's descendants. But Jesus says, hey, but you can still work against me even if you are a descendant of Abraham. Look at yourselves. You're trying to, what are you trying to do? You're, you're trying to plot against me and eventually kill me. And what I care about is not who your ancestor is. It's really about having room for my word. Abraham had room in his heart for God and he obeyed. But you don't. Ultimately, our relationship with the Lord is a one-on-one -on -one thing. Your parent could have been a spiritual giant. I mean, you could be proud of it. And you can, you can thank God for giving you such a wonderful parent. But the Lord will still ask you one day. So, I blessed you with a good parent. Good, good parent. Uh, but so what? Did you continue with my word? And my teaching? What is, what is your relationship with me? So spiritually, we are always putting up with two fights. One is this, this fight with sin, right? The other is the fight with making room for the word and filling our hearts with it. That's a fight. These two fights are inevitably connected with each other. Your heart has to be filled with the word of God in order to discern sin in your heart and root it out. You don't discern sin with human knowledge, no. You don't discern sin with your own morality. You discern it with the word of God. That's how you fight sin. So, so before fighting with sin in your life, what do you need to do? You need to fight for the word. This is the most fierce battle for us in this world because Satan will do just about anything to turn your attention away from the word of God. One obstacle I see a lot these days is how people put freedom first in everything. The world defines freedom as the license to do whatever we want. So going to the word, keeping it, and continuing it, and obeying it have also become a choice for us, even for the believers. But what we should remember is that that sort of worldly freedom will always leave a room for mold of sin to grow. And that sin will cause us to keep choosing our own ways that will eventually lead us to destruction. For instance, let me give you an example. A father who, is, who likes to drink, who is an alcoholic, will want to drink and stay drunk, right? Because he's an alcoholic. He thinks he's free to do that. And he does have freedom for that. He can do it. But eventually... If he continues down that road, he'll lose his health. And one day he'll lose the freedom to stop drinking. Let me give you another example. A father or a mother 
who wants to relive his or her wants and failures through his, her, his or her child. They had this something that they wanted to do in their life. They couldn't do it. So what do they do? What do they do? They, they sort of pass it down to their child. You got to do this. During my time, I couldn't do it. So I made this you know, opportunity for you. So you should do it. You know? Many parents do this right. But continue down that road and it can eventually drive away the precious relationship that he or she has and lose the chance to freely love and to be loved. The world's definition of freedom is different from the freedom of those who want to live a godly life. And I pray that we could all say that it's the freedom within God's will that we are going for. Seeing two different you know, ch- children grow up at home, my, my personal experience, you know, I believe I'm, I'm learning a little bit about godly freedom. Kids constantly want total freedom over everything. They want to do whatever they want. They run around like crazy doing everything they want if you just leave them be. They know no limits, But as adults, as parents, we know that something will harm them if they do it. So we we put a stop to them, you know, because, for example, pulling on the electric cord, I mean, it seems fun, right? But if you leave your kid to play like that, one day he or she might be electrocuted. So what do you do as a parent? You say, no, don't do that. The Bible defines freedom as the ability to do whatever is right in and through Jesus Christ. His works and his words. That's why we need to create room in our hearts for that. And in order to do this well, I just want you to take two things home. Now, if you forgot everything that I've just said in this short period, then take these two home. And let me just emphasize this. One, don't be satisfied with what you hear from the pulpit on the Lord's say. Don't be satisfied with this sermon. What's more important is continuing with the word in your life. Many people make a great start in their faith life, but they fall under sin's tyranny when the freshness of the feelings have worn off. When the world begins to tempt and tease and when the desires of our sinful nature rise and announce their preferences like like mold that grows in the dark. But it's not so much the beginning but abiding and continuing and holding on to it. So fight for the word. Dear brothers and sisters, fight for the word. Two, it is the truth that sets us free. Your pursuit of happiness, knowledge, and profit out there in the world will not solve that emptiness in your heart. Do not look for freedom in your own desires, but in Jesus' words. So make room for his words in your life, and you will find the way. You will find the truth. And you will find the life that will really provide the freedom meant for you. This week I I met a brother uh, for the first time. He is visiting Korea. And he he came to me saying that he has this emptiness in his heart that he can't solve. I was getting ready for this sermon, right? So I told him a summarized version of the, the sermon. You know, what you're missing in your life is the word of God. And he said, that hits me. I haven't been, you know, doing faith life for three years. And maybe there's a reason that I met you, Pastor. And and then he went back. He promised to come today, but I don't know. I I don't think he came. I'm going to call him right after the service. Continue with the word. Hold on to the word. And this is not easy because it's a fight. 
And I like reading children's books because it's short and it has clear lessons. Now, in the book, Weenie the Pooh and the North Pole, Christopher Robin, the character inside, organizes a band of animal friends for a journey to find the North Pole. The preparation for this expedition goes quite well, except for one minor problem. No one knows where the North Pole is. Now, at one point, they're traveling. Little Rue, another character, he falls into a stream, and the whole group rallies to his rescue. Pooh grabs a pole and fishes him out. Pooh is standing with the pole in his hand, and when Christopher Robin exclaims, Pooh, where did you find that pole? The little bear, looking puzzled, says, I just found it somewhere. I thought it would be useful, so I just picked it up. Then Christopher Robin joyfully announces so everyone can hear, Pooh, the expedition is over. You have found it. You found the North Pole. And together they stick to the pole in the ground, and Christopher Robin ties a message on that pole saying, North Pole discovered by Pooh. You know, this image, this illustration, it seems to me that this expedition is symbolic of our culture's quest for finding the meaning of life, for finding the it, the spiritual something that they're th thirsty for. The world is in the search of something, yet no one seems, seems to know what it looks like or where it's located. In our hungry spirit thirsty, curious world, we are flooded with men and women that are in search of the spiritual. People are looking for the spiritual. Then every once in a while, one of them picks up something or discovers something cool that they find insightful and boldly announce that they have found the answer. Many people agree for a time that it really looks like the it that they were looking for all along. And then everyone goes home. A couple days later, they are out again on an, another expedition. What if I told you that our efforts shouldn't be misled into countless expeditions? What if we already have a guidebook that tells us where the North Pole is and how to get there, and even tell us about the North Star. What more do we need than Jesus, the bright morning star who was hung on the cross, the pole where he put down Satan's power of sin, and of course, the gospel book that tells us all about it. Let us pray. Dear God, it is indeed a fierce fight that we have to put up in order to maintain your presence in our lives. Let us not sloth away or be naive about this, but be sensitive about it and be fit spiritually with discernment. Please give us strength to fight this battle for the word, to keep it going in our lives with a will to obey. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks be to God for speaking two words through his message. Please join me in singing hymn number 409 in response. Hymn number 409. Thanks to God who was once spoken in the day that made it all is the voice that called the nation is the parts that try her God has spoken 
Heavenly Father, we lift your name up high. Even in these times of distress and uncertainty, we thank you for the blessing and the opportunity to praise you and to worship you. Lord, thank you for your message that was spoken to us through Pastor Justin. Let us be firmly rooted in your word. And while we're living in this world, let us not be conformed to this world, but let us be rooted deeply in your word and your spirit. Lord God, I pray for your protection as we begin this week. You are our hiding place, and under your wings we can always find refuge. Protect us from trouble wherever we go, and keep evil far from us. No matter where we are, we will look to you as our protector, the one who fights for us every day. Your love and faithfulness, along with your goodness and mercy, surround us daily. So let us not fear whatever might come against us. Our trust is in you, God, and we give thanks to you for your love and protection. Lord Jesus, you know what it means to be pursued by enemies. And because of your compassion and understanding, you know the harm we and our families face every day. As Christians and as followers of yours, we are marked as enemies. But Lord, teach us your love so that we may be able to love our enemies, to pray for them, but as well to resist evil in your powerful name. God, in this world, truth, truth is not, uh, Lord, truth is, uh, can, can be skewed. Lord, we, we pray that your absolute truth be in us, Lord, that we may be able to discern what is good and what is evil. Lord, we pray for our Pastor Justin and Pastor Stephen, Pastor Jay, and the elders and deacons, along with all who serve in this ministry. Lord, we pray that you be with them, guide them, and give them wisdom, knowledge, and strength daily as they further your kingdom. And we also pray for the health of the leaders as well as our congregation. Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us in our daily lives as we continue to be Christ-like in this world. Let us now give our offerings with cheerful and willing hearts, and let it be pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much for your wonderful music and devotion. Good morning again. I'd like to welcome each one of you joining us today for IV online worship service. Due to the recent situation of COVID-19, we replace both 10 a.m. traditional worship and Nexus worship with IV online worship service. YouTube live streaming is available without subtitles during the worship service at Yongnak IV YouTube channel. After the service, a YouTube video link of the whole service will be edited and sent out to you in the afternoon around 5 p.m. Please be advised that we are in the process of gradually opening our doors to the public, though we still have seat limits. There is an online method of giving your offerings for your convenience. Be sure to fill out your name, date of birth, and the offering type. For further information, please refer to the bulletin. General Children's Worship will be on Zoom until further update. Please pray for General Children's Ministry and Pastor Jay and our teachers and students. Let us now recite together the memory verse for this month. Ready? Begin. He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Amen. Please join the responsive reading of commission and blessing. We are God's servants sent on a mission. Let us make God's deeds known among the people. We will ready ourselves to go where God sends us. High praises to God will be in our throat. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. Keep the commandments God has given. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. God grants victory over sin to the humble. Rejoice, for God takes pleasure in us. Where two or three gather, God is with us. We seek to live honorably in the spirit of Christ. Amen. Would you please stand and join me in singing closing song, hymn number 415. Hymn number 415. to be God's people, showing by our lives His grace, one in heart and one in spirit, sign of hope for all the rain, let us show how He has changed us, and remain us as His own. Walking in his world today, taking his own test upon us, all his sacred words obey. Let us rise then to his songs, dedicate to him our Lord.
Now it's time for sharing peace with each other. Now I heard this when I was really little, and I just wanted to do this with you today. Uh, let's greet each other by saying, no Bible, no meal. No Bible, no meal. Don't you forget that. And here is the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us that are determined to experience the word of God that is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword that penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit and joints and marrow, judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart wherever we are, from now until forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.